Hello, and welcome again to BCSC in Action. In our fourth installment, you will get to see two segments. The first is an interview with Nick Williams, BCSC's Coordinator of Instructional Technology, and the last segment is a holiday greeting from BCSC Superintendent, Dr. Jim Roberts. Enjoy the show. In our first segment, we sit down with Nick Williams to learn more about a new concept in BCSC's e-learning days. Thank you for coming on, Mr. Williams. Ah, thanks for having me. All right, let's jump right into this. It's Learning has been a very successful community for students and teachers to connect and share information. Can you tell us a little bit about It's Learning and the e-learning days? Yeah, so It's Learning is our online learning management system. So students can go on and have all of their curriculum. Teachers have all of their classes loaded in there, and they can load up uh, lessons as needed. Um, and then the other th part of this that allows us to do an eventual e-learning day is that we have one-to-one -one computers. First through eighth have Chromebooks, and nine through 12 have laptops. Mm -hmm. So that's another tool that uh, allows us to do this. So the e-learning days is a great opportunity that the state allows us to participate in. Why we do e-learning days is that it eliminates any added days at the end of the school year. So if we have, I think we had eight snow days uh, several years ago at this point, but that ended up tacking on a lot of days at the end of the year. We miss seniors. Families have already uh, planned some vacations. Mm -hmm. So this allows us to kind of continue education, not at the end of the year, but kind of in line with where we're at. Um, it also allows us to kind of teach you guys how and to learn online and with uh, some of these 21st century skills and develop those. So hopefully, hopefully it helps prepare you as well uh, for future. All right, now when we have an e-learning day, how will the news get out? Okay, so the e-learning day, the BCSC plan is that if we have five snow days, uh, that those are already built into our schedule to make up, which is that second week of spring break. And then that sixth day would be an actual e-learning day. Uh, and we communicate that online. So if you go on the BCSC homepage, there's a link to a website dedicated to e-learning and information for parents and students. We're doing shows like this, uh, social media, and just kind of uh, talking to other community members. I know that the schools have had parent nights uh, that I've talked to and the administration and teachers have talked to as well. We're sending home flyers. Um, so just about anything we can do to communicate that with uh, our stakeholders, we're gonna try to do. All right, well, it'll definitely be nice having uh, less days taken off at, uh, or added on at the end of the year. Yeah. Now, what about uh, some alternatives for families that may have poor or no internet connection? What, how would they get online if we were to have an e-learning day? Right, so I think that's a big barrier for our county. Uh, so we're trying to do as much as we can. Uh, the first thing is, is that we will have three school buildings open if we have an e-learning day, and that's going to be east, south side, and north side, and kind of working with the transportation, working with facilities and maintenance and food services. We're gonna provide lunch at those schools. We can make sure that they're cleared, the parking lots and sidewalks, and typically those are the roads that get cleared first by the city so that w we can hopefully get there as safe as we can. Um, those will open, and e-learning days in general, it's uh, kind of in the 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. time range. Teachers have to have their lessons loaded by 9 a.m and they'll be available until 3 p.m., but the schools will be open at that time too. Uh, if that's not an option, there is a senior last year that put together a map of all of the free Wi-Fi spots in town, and we have a lot. Uh, it's over 40 free Wi-Fi spots, but that's a kind of continually changing, uh, like I know Chick-fil-A was added this past <laughs> year, um, and some other restaurants around town for people to get free Wi-Fi. And then also, our community has really come together and several community buildings have agreed to allow students with a guardian to come to their place for free Wi-Fi. So that includes the Ridge, Westside Community Church, United Way, which is downtown, uh, several fire stations, uh, German Township, Southwest uh, Bartholomew Fire Station. So there's several um, 
that have kind of just come together to help us uh, hopefully fit the needs of students. There's another option still on top of that is that there are three kind of uh, reduced pricing for Wi-Fi that Comcast, AT&T, and the FCC offers uh, for, it could be as low as $10 a month for some type of internet access. So those links are also on the website that will hopefully help parents. Uh, we know that that's not gonna cover everyone, but hopefully it provides options for families to plan ahead and uh, hopefully be able to get internet access. All right, now, what if uh, a student were doing an assignment on one of these e-learning days and they run into a problem, like they didn't know the answer or um, let's say they just were totally stumped on this question. Is there any way that they could like contact the teacher or do anything to, uh, or some like time frame where they would have to uh, complete the assignment or? Yeah, so uh, first off, communication with the teacher is key uh, or supporting teachers, including special ed teachers and everyone else that could be involved in that school day. So part of that is it's learning, has several communication modes set up in the platform. Uh, and then again, some teachers may set up alternative uh, ways to communicate as well, but there's messaging and chats and discussion boards. Um, so you can communicate with your teacher online that way. Uh, and then there's also, if parents need help, students need help, there's going to be a hotline that's going to be open on an e-learning day. Uh, so that number is going to be 812-418-0252. And then there's also an email that we're gonna have people checking all day and we check it all the time. So if there's any questions at all that anybody would have about e-learning days, they can email e-learning at bcse.k12.in.us and we'll get back to you if there's any questions, again, before, during, or on after that day. All right, now once again, uh, on the e-learning days, the hotline number is 812-418-0252. Now, I guess the big question is, do you think e-learning days will be a success this year? Well, I, you know, I hope so. <laughs> I, uh, hopefully we don't have that many snow days, but uh, it's a nice option to have as a school district. So as a school district, we know that there isn't anything more valuable than the students being in the classroom with the teacher that knows them. But this does provide us a nice option. So if, if we do have an e-learning day, uh, the hope is and the guidelines by the state are that you have continuous education. So whatever you're working on in the classroom, it should be that same content on an e-learning day. It shouldn't be test reviews or kind of packets that are sent home. It should be something in continuation. So my hope is that if we do have one of these e-learning days that students can uh, kind of continue that education, still have meaningful learning experiences and come back to school and continue right where they left off without having any large breaks really. Right. Okay, now tell me a little bit about the BCSE e-learning contest. Okay, so for that day we're going to be on social media. There is uh, a Facebook and a Twitter and an Instagram account for BCSE eLearning. So if you use the hashtag BCSE eLearning with some pictures of you working in your pajamas maybe <laughs> on, um, on your assignments at home or uh, having creative lessons that I guess the teacher may assign you and you put up some of those pictures then we'll have a, kind of a drawing for the best pictures and yeah. giveaway uh, a prize. Once again, that hashtag is hashtag BCSE e learning, all lowercase. Now, tell me a little bit about the future of technology in our classrooms. Now, right now, we have smart boards, we have projectors, we have all sorts of things. We have like iPads that some of the teachers use, and now we have laptops for the students to use. Uh, what other things can we expect in the future? So, what uh, at least some research has shown, kind of the, they call it the Horizon Report. So what we're looking at is more interactive kind of TVs. So instead of having a projector and having to replace the bulbs, it have, it'd be a big TV and they're getting more affordable just like the Chromebooks and laptops. But they'd be kind of like a uh, smart board, but the display would be right there and it'd be interactive. So that's one thing in the classroom, at least a technology wise. 
The other piece of this uh, would be getting teachers having more mobile devices. Um, so right now we have just the traditional laptops and uh, they make now the Surface Pros, uh, which have kind of a tablet with a keyboard. They have the laptops that are convertible, so they flip all the way over and are interactive. So we'll keep analyzing and seeing what is the best fit for our teachers and students as we move forward with that. Kind of a few years out there is virtual reality. You guys have seen the Google Glasses and the gaming stuff with that. Uh, so that could be, uh, it's not necessarily in two years, but several years down the road as companies start investing more in that, we could see that. Global partnerships, just continuing that the, the communication that you can have with technology um, is, is really unprecedented. And as that continues, hopefully we can have a more global view with some of our students. We, we already are. Uh, and then maker spaces. So Google has genius hour kind of built into their schedule of just creativity uh, and places for people to play. Uh, and there's already STEM labs and some of these maker spaces going up in some of our elementaries and really looking at kind of how the library space is used. Uh, we've been really good about kind of redefining that and, and moving into the next, the next steps. All right. Um, now, is there any questions you have about the technology department here at East High School? No. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, well, thank you very much for coming on, Mr. Williams. Um, yeah. yeah, thank thanks you. for having me. <laughs> In our second segment, Dr. Jim Roberts sends a warm holiday greeting to all viewers. Hi, this is Dr. Jim Roberts, superintendent of the Bartholomew Consolidated School Corporation. On behalf of our nearly 2,000 staff members, I offer best wishes for a wonderful holiday season. That the spirit of the holidays will warm your heart and home, and I hope that you enjoy a new year full of peace, hope, love, health, and happiness. We hope you have enjoyed our fourth installment of BCSC in Action. Continuous improvements come in different forms, whether it's planning the future of our facilities, communicating with all of our stakeholders, putting great ideas into practice, or celebrating individual success. You can be sure that BCSC is always in action. We hope you've enjoyed our show. Thanks for watching and be sure to look for our next installment.